I'm Pastor Steve, and in looking at the history of Jesus as a person, throughout the scriptures, and I'm looking today at John chapter 2, verse 17, where a young Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, goes into Jerusalem and shakes up, rattles, and rousts all the vendors out of the temple. That, John puts it early in the gospel and john says that they remembered this later and they remembered the scripture from psalm 69 which says zeal for thy house has consumed me now that passage is an emblem of the jewish zealot of that day people who were militantly struggling against rome in an effort to keep the Romans out of, especially out of the temple, out of Jerusalem, where the people could worship according to the traditions of the fathers. That's what led up into the Jewish war. Scholars have long observed that Jesus' teachings, like in the Sermon on the Mount, where he says, think not that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Not one dash, not one dot will vanish from the law until all is accomplished. Now, they take that and other passages where, where Jesus is clearly depicted as an Essene zealot, and then they, they have to contrast that with the later teachings of the Apostle Paul, who, who wants to teach everybody to abandon the law, and he actually says that the law is a curse, and he teaches salvation by grace through faith. That's the teaching of the Apostle Paul. Well, there's a disconnect there, and I believe that the bridge between that disconnect, between Jesus, the Essene zealot, and the, the uh, Pauline Gentile mission, that that happened after the resurrection, that Jesus was different after the resurrection. Now, I have written a history of Jesus, the human being, and I believe that when he was crucified, that with the help of Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, probably uh, Mary Magdalene and, and other women who were assisting in, in funding the Essene mission, they basically were able to save him at the very last second. In other words, he died and they brought him back. But when he came back, he was wounded. Remember the story in, John, in, in John's gospel of the, of the appearance to Thomas where he actually has still bearing the wounds in his body. Well, what happened to that body? Now, the supernatural story would simply say that he was beamed up into the sky 40 days later. But clearly, it was after 40 days that he appeared to the Apostle Paul, and it was that appearance or conversation with the Apostle Paul that brought a connection to the Gentile mission and the, and the changeover. Now, I believe that the Apostle John was the only apostle who made the whole transition from the Essene group over to the Pauline group. And that's why the gospel according to John has such derogatory statements in it pertaining to Jewish people. Um, what happened was, and it is, it's a, it's a very anti-Semitic document. What happened was that John went with Paul later on into what would be called the Jesus movement, the early church that would form the church that we would become members of. That, that, that Jesus was still on earth. I believe he, he stayed on earth until the Jewish war under the identity of, uh, of Jesus ben Ananias, Jesus the son of Ananias who appeared according to Josephus, as an older Essene, all scarred up and, 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 and beaten, who, who was on the walls of Jerusalem during the Roman siege. I believe that was our Jesus 
that he died that time after he had walked the earth and taught and more or less crossed over into at least encouraging the Gentile movement that was taught by Paul and John. The anti-Semitic thing was because of the their feelings, their incredibly negative feelings after the Jewish war, after seeing what had happened, the atrocities that had occurred during the Jewish war. So I believe that if we are to have a gospel of unconditional love and acceptance, a gospel of complete forgiveness and salvation, which is the salvation of the world, if we're going to believe that, what we need is to understand all the mistakes that were made, all the tragedies that occurred, so that we do not perpetuate the teachings of separation and the teachings of negativity, the anti-Semitism and the Christian supremacy that is taught in the New Testament. If we can move away from those teachings, I believe that we can find peace. We can come together and work together. Thank you so much for watching this.